this episode of Dial H for Hero Clicks, we're going to be going over the fully spoiled Galactus dial, the Spider-Man and Absolute Carnage pictures that we saw earlier, and also going to try to redeem some threads. That's right, we got a Thread Dead Redemption in this episode. This is episode 324. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. <laughs> Alley for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Pre orders are up for Spider Man and Venom and Carnage Absolute symbiote or whatever it's called i don't i can't keep track of all these sets names anymore but pre-orders are there and if you want five percent off your order use code dial five that is all caps d-i-a-l five no spaces five percent off your order start building up your sweet cool stuff inc discount if you don't have any discounts yet start using the dial five code after a while you're going to get your own discount that's even better than our code can you believe that simeon even better whoa yeah. i'm up to eight it's amazing eight percent eight percent off eight percent off nice yeah. all right uh, i want to shout out all our ten dollar patreon members which is uh lucas paulo ringo van swisher uh lucas tom van holland kevin nelson and then all of our dialy super fans which is aaron lloyd loyal miller organist uh ben jones mock cast master mike templeton honorary supermans malcolm rush christian bogan larry slade and seth aaron thank you guys so much your support of the show simeon i'd like to start with what made us happy this week what made you happy this week my man i did some trivia i, I went to like a, a bar trivia event ah. and uh the second question the second question was actually right in my wheelhouse it was uh just like a marvel related superhero question it was like this costumed hero trained in like the ancient city of Kunlun who is it and I was like really yeah I like- was like it's got to be Iron Fist because there's no way that they're going to expect anyone to like dig deep into common like comic knowledge and be like well actually there's like seven costume superheroes that have trained in Kunlun uh you know the mystical city um Jang Chi yeah there, the there's several one. I mean, there's Thunder. multiple Iron Fists as well. Um, mm. But yeah, I put Iron Fist, a.k.a. Danny Rand, and that's exactly what he said. He said it was Iron Fist, a.k.a. Danny Rand. And He's so, like the only one in the bar to get it right? Uh, I don't know. I Actually, I didn't check with the other groups. Uh, see, that would have been awesome. Then that's like, I love coming in clutch like that. I don't do trivia, really. But like, that's a good feeling, right? When you're like, ah, oh, this yeah. is like, no one else knew this. It was all on me. That's great. I actually got two in a, two questions in a row correct because the next question was like in this Shakespeare play like three witches give a whatever whatever that future telling word is um, they they do Seance? that for a guy huh the seance is that no what no no uh, it's like uh, they no, like it's read, not, the, read the future not, or whatever yeah they're looking at like and wrinkles whatever they're called or something something stupid all that fictional stuff i don't believe in which is but trash. yeah it was they gave him some healing they gave him some healing crystals and essential oils later and they're like it was go. like we're a, we're a witch wow sorry that's what like, what shakespeare day. play or what shakespeare character got like that uh premonition uh from three witches ah. and i was like ah uh, well, there's only one play that i remember that happening and the title of the play is also the title of like the main dude, so I just went with that. Macbeth? And I was, yeah, what it is? Yep. So I I literally watched Macbeth earlier this year, and it was all like in the original Shakespeare. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I have no idea what happened in that show. Like someone died. Yes, he like bad about it or something. Sorry for all this pre-show banter, guys. <laughs> We're gonna get into the show in a minute here. I literally had no idea what happened in that entire show. I was just there to see a friend who was like in it. You know, I like to support theater and whatever. I have no idea what happened. Like people died for sure. Cause they like covered themselves in like blood or like whatever. Like they totally like fought and someone totally died. And then his wife was like, it hey, quit being a baby. You also have to go kill someone else. And he's like, no, I'm 
bad or i literally have no idea what happened to Macbeth. like that's like the I'm most like a dad? Gap. <laughs> yeah, yeah i really don't is that any is that close at all do you remember any um from what no, i remember I it's like a take on uh it's kind of like a writing trope where um like predetermination kind of thing so like he's he's told of a potential future and he focuses on it to the point where he makes it happen uh but this is all like high school knowledge so it's been years since i okay. actually read anything about it so i couldn't tell don't you don't too, much. too much Simeon. calm down don't need to carbonate yeah. yourself we don't need to look at all the all the rings that make up the simian tree here okay don't need to don't need to do that <laughs> Uh, all right, no, that's cool. Trivia is fun. I'm glad. You, I'm glad you had a good time. Uh, what made me happy this week? To be honest with you, I I honestly uh, don't know. I uh, just had a, another good weekend. I know I do know what happened. Once again, community theater is great. It's fun to volunteer and do all this stuff. You like basically devote you know, your evenings to it and all this stuff, and you don't get paid anything. I've been to three different theaters, and I keep getting reminded like why this is my new favorite theater to. Excuse me, I'm drinking a bang right now. I got, I got burps. Just let me know. Um, new favorite theater to act in. They paid, they're paying for my gas to go to and fro each show. Give me a free meal each night because it's a dinner theater. So I get a free meal and I get a, a drink, which is either like I can take a pop or a um, an alcoholic beverage, uh, which uh, I don't drink. So I'm just like, I'm just taking them anyways and I'm just giving them to like my family. <laughs> so uh, I'm supplying them. So, like that's great, you know? And then, People in the cast are cool, and one of the dudes in the cast like gave me a um, an Ash, like an Ultimate Ash, like NECA figure, which just has all the cool heads and hands and all that stuff, and just it's a really nice NECA action figure, which I've been meaning to buy, an, a really good Ash versus Evil Dead Ash figure, and I just never got around to it. And he like just gave it to me, and I'm like, dang, this cast is rocking, this theater is sick, I love it. I just keep getting reminded how much I love acting. And how much I love doing that. That being said, I cannot wait till this play is over so I can like do whatever I want now, like just for nights. But I just keep getting reminded how much I love that theater. So sorry for like the 10 minutes of banter, guys. We are a Hero Clicks podcast. Simeon, you want to talk about some Hero Clicks? Is that okay? If it's okay with you? Yeah. Let's talk about Sent-wise. all the new Hero Clicks. Okay, well, we'll talk about them, Simeon. So I have it pulled up, or I can talk about something else. No, talk let's jump Gallen. in. Let's yeah. jump into the big sure. man, big man, the big boy uh, of Roar. the year, Mister Galactus. So we have seen some bits and parts and uh, uh, other things for this Galactus, um, but we finally got a full card and a few other pictures of him but we we finally got a full card of galactus so he doesn't just have a 750 250 100 point line he has 750 500 400 points three different starting lines for his bigger dial and then his other dial is 250 and 100 and then of course between the two dials, if like you're playing him at 400 and he gets knocked to the last of his 400 point dial, he stops taking damage and then goes to his 250 point dial. Um, but we got the front of his card, which is probably the most important thing that we were missing. Uh, so real name, Gallon, Cosmic Deity, Herald, for whatever reason he's got Herald. Uh, when... The G001A dial would be KO'd. Instead, Galactus continues on the click one of the G001B dial. It's pretty standard uh, 3x6 base stuff. Uh, He can't be healed back up to the G001A dial, even if you started on him. Um, Placement when starting the game can't be placed on special terrain, can't be placed on an opponent's starting area when summoned by the Herald dial, and can be placed on blocking terrain and immediately destroys that terrain when doing so, which is kind of neat. Uh, he 
is unique in the capacity that he can actually land on blocking. He has two traits. Galactus can't be the target of an attack with more than one target, which is great for boss battles because, you know, Galactus is going to have all his other buddies that you're going to want to target. Um, and then he's got Galactus has landed on Earth. Power, place Galactus anywhere on the map except an opponent's starting area or on special terrain. And so that's like the ultimate phasing teleport kind of thing. Um, but yeah. And then he has uh, exactly one special power, his whole dial. And it p- appears on exactly one click. It is stop, impervious, regeneration, Galactus can reduce penetrating damage. And that is because I am Galactus, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Um, so yeah, we've, we've seen parts like enough parts of his dial that this really doesn't change a whole lot. It is cool that he'll be able to like walk into walls and stuff and just destroy them. No multi-attack, no, no protected from stat modifiers, no protected from all the figures that get rid of protected outwit. So, you know, Koba can just give his power cosmic to a, uh, suited henchman and then galactus has the underworld team ability for 750 points with no willpower that's cool it's pain it's painfully mediocre like painfully yes yeah. hurts, hurts my soul less than <laughs> mediocre really like i'm i'm just uh, very whelmed the sculpt is yeah, so cool well, that i am willing to pay the money to have the like sculpture I'm willing to like pay the money for that. I'm not willing to pay the money for like at at his 750 points, I'd just much rather play an older Galactus with all of his protected uh multi-attack like kind of stuff going on. Even though like those ones are way more points, I just feel like if I was to play him at 750 and someone was playing Professor Moriarty which, I mean, could end up on a team. Or they're playing the new Black Leopard. Or, uh, like, Kobik. Or, like, you know, hundred of under things that are on teams fairly regularly. Um, this guy just doesn't do it. He just dies. He just dies. It's... And it doesn't take very long to get him to, like, average values. It takes, like, a couple decent hits. And for 750 points, if you're... If you're doing like a boss battle situation and you've got you're facing off against like three teams of 250 or whatever weird thing you built it to, or yeah. you're doing a one-on-one battle and they just built up like a 750 points of Avengers, either way, he just does not stack up with all the like stat modifiers and stuff. A 21 defense does not go very far, especially yeah, without multi attack. It, uh, it sucks that he sucks, man. I it guess really there's does. no other way to like, just like to say it, but oh, you know, it's just such a bummer. You know, he, he needs to have cooler things, especially the fact that like we haven't had Galactus in forever already. But when we first heard that his highest was going to be 750, even with all you know 20 grids of blood that this guy is coming on, and then sort of technically not really, but yeah, kind of two stop clicks, I guess, is neat. You know, with the whole has to stop on the switching dials type deal. Um, he should have more of his actual stop click. He should just be good. I don't know how to, like, say this without seeming slightly condescending, but, like, not my Galactus, bro. He's just not. He, he looks yeah. cool. He's awesome. But I hope everybody realizes he paid $100 for a 25-point line and a really cool statue that you right. would probably knock over. Like on a hero clicks table, one of these. I, I almost guarantee, just with the sheer amount of like the volume of people playing Galactus at twenty five points, plus all the stuff to just have on your sideline nowadays, how big he is. I feel like he, there's going to be a lot of broken Galactuses, Galacti. Like I just feel like Alan's I, dropped. He yeah, I imagine it'll baby. be like uh, Supreme Intelligence, where people just put the dial out, but. I can see him getting some play at 100, maybe some play at 250, 
but like there's no reason to play him at either of those because there's comparable yeah. figures with like die like at 250 he's 11 clicks long that's the same as a single base character um with one Sad. stop click and like again his one cool thing is that he can be placed anywhere on the map he can see through hindering but he can't see through other yeah. colossals or blocking or like anything like that. So if someone's hiding inside a house, Galactus is like, where, where are you? I'm about mm-hmm. to eat the world. So, where are so you? Lame. This dude can eat the world, but he can't like see me behind a door. Yeah. You no, know? I'm sorry to bring up doors in a controversy. He can't see <laughs> me behind a wall. Can't, whatever, you know, like same difference. Like he can't see me behind a wall. He can't see me behind a taller person. You know, if there's a giant, like whatever, you're like, really? That sucks, dude. Because I know Galactus in comics is made to be a bigger threat than most people, like, than he probably is, right? But but he is. He's a huge, crazy threat, world-destroying threat. And I get it. Like, Living Tribunal exists. So, like, should Galactus be better than Living Tribunal? Technically, no. But for when, like, how we use him in comics and what who he is as a character, he's, like, the, one of the scariest things, like, ever in the Marvel Universe, right? So he should be, he should be amazing. He should be, like, after this four-year or whatever since Zombie Galactus, five years, six years since Zombie Galactus, who's just, like, eh, you know? At the very least, like, yeah, he's bigger and cooler. But, um, and he, he doesn't auto-die on maps that have blocking. That's cool. I like that. The fact that he's a big base and he doesn't auto die, yeah. you know, like um, when when they can't be placed by those rules, like that's great. I think every character now should have that rule if they're going to keep making uh, what is this three by six or whatever. I, I can't remember, but yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm overwhelmed. I don't want to talk about him anymore. If you're done, I'm done. I don't, I don't have much to say about Galactus here. Yeah, Gallons, one other uh, thing. Gallons are really cool. Uh, the elemental converter does give him like some potentially some like ability if like you're going against a large swarm of stuff and you can rack up the elemental converter really quick um it does like hurt your opponent a lot faster than it does galactus uh so that's cool but again no no multi-attack no protected from normal stuff he's always gonna get yeah yeah, that is another thing to keep in mind. He'll he'll always have the elemental uh, converter. Yeah. But, um. Here's here's the bummer thing, right? Galactus can't even move that well. He's got to do a power action. He's sure to go anywhere. Yeah. You're wasting. So unless you place it, you got like perfect foresight and placement or whatever. You might set yourself up in the shrinking of the map. You know, if the games go long, which I think if you're playing Galactus, they won't because you'll die. But um. It's just like, it's another thing where it's like, he doesn't even have sidestep at the very least. You know, if he's going to have zero movement, you could at least give him sidestep. Well, I think four. it's only four. for opponents that uh, the converter. Was oh, that right? Is. Yeah, it's one unavoidable. At the end of each opponent's turn, deal one unavoidable damage to each character oh, on the force. Pardon me. Excuse but, me. Excuse me. But yeah, I, uh, you're not I'm wrong that, that like him being able to move anywhere on the map isn't like amazing because he's wasting an action doing that he doesn't have any free actions period um other than like outwit perplex it's it's not Uh, even as good as dark side's boom tube yeah no it could at the very least when he's given a move action remove a token it should be free for him to do this it could it can cost him an action sure doesn't need to give him a token i would i would say yeah i I agree. I think or, or they should have brought back attack. some form of multi attack, something like, uh, like he can, like double power action and place and then attack even. Yeah, that, make two I mean, attacks. That would at least double power action. That'd be great. Let him wipe one but, person off the map first. Um, but yeah, it's. I don't know. I'll attempt him at seven fifty once, and I don't have high hopes. All right, but that's enough for glass. Moving on, moving on. Spider Man and the Absolute Carnage set. Simeon, can you give me a quick read? Uh, what this set is about before I jump into the figures here. Spider Man uh, and I. What? I. Oh, I think sorry. You mean... sorry. I, I had the wrong. I, I'm sorry. You're right. I keep getting it wrong. Tell me what it actually is. I believe it's the death 
and the Dwarf Absolute Slaughter series is a bit of 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 a bit. Yeah. Like it. Now, can you read the longer version for me? Just so we can get like a real <laughs> encompassing version of the set. Or I can read it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are right. now known to be most poisonous Doctor and Captain Marvel, as well as Dwarf 1776. But yeah, you I go ahead and read it. it. Okay. All right. Give me one second here. Pulling it up. The Virgin Heroes latest theme, Dwarfs and Venus, the Absolute Slaughter series, is back to everyone's favorite gear war. In addition, everyone's favorite poison-related figures. This series also includes members of SSM, uh, three emojis with star eyes and three exclamation points. We had the opportunity to get our hands on a total of seven fun gears, such as pumpkin bombs, slaughter symbiotics, blasphemy swords, and more. Three uh, emojis with heart eyes. Looking forward to this brand new Inversion Hero series. Please look forward to the latest news from the editor. Oh, trust me. I love your editor, and I am, I'm always looking forward to the latest news. All right. Once again, though, uh, on the packaging, uh, which I don't know if we mentioned this before, Alex Ross Art. If you guys remember that podcast me and Simi did, uh, I don't even know if it was this year, honestly. But Malcolm Rush sent us questions about box art, and I believe I said, at least, or at least me and Simi and both said this, that just you should just make all the box art be Alex Ross box art because like that just it's beautiful. Alex Ross is an amazing human being and he's just an amazing artist. And uh, all I'm saying is the last three Marvel sets, Captain America, the Spider Man set, and uh, Fantastic Four, it's all been Alex Ross box art. So um, maybe it was already in the works, or uh, maybe not, or maybe uh, you know WizKids is taking notice of little old, little old us and they're like, yeah, you guys are right. Like, it doesn't take that many brain cells to realize Alex Ross is, like, amazing. But still, it's been very consistent with Alex Ross artwork. Also, EarthX had Alex Ross art, but I think that already came out before we were talking about it. I know Black Panther didn't, and then, obviously, X-Men didn't. But, uh, hey, these last couple sets at Alex Ross uh, box art, so it is what it is. Just saying, throwing it out there. Simeon, we got we got to look at a bunch of characters, all right? We have a ton of symbiotes. We had a lot of cool stuff. We got to see some sculpts, and I'm excited. So three of the, um, what were they called again? But we had the blasphemy sword, um, but oh, that's yeah. not here. We have yeah, uh, we have the superior Spider-Man arms, which is a super rare heavy Slaughter equipment object. Slaughter symbiotics is the Carnage symbiote, which is also a uh, super rare light object, specifically for Carnage though. So I'm curious if that's gonna be like a flurry blades blades. Maybe? Something cool. That'd be awesome, dude. Can you yeah. imagine another flurry? You know what we need in Hero Clicks? <laughs> more, another item. More access to flurry. flurry. Especially, especially one that's a light that anyone can pick up and sidestep and draw. Yeah. That's especially really if neat. it's cheaper than 10 points. It's not, but I mean. It's absolutely cool. Yeah. Uh, we also have pumpkin bombs, which is cool. That's neat. Um, I imagine some form of two bolts energy explosion. Be smoke cloud if it's bad, you know, like smoke cloud is free. Who knows? I'm excited. We have uh, symbiotes that I can see. Um, we got the chick symbiote, you know, the yellow one from the 90s Spider-Man. We got anti-agent venom, a normal agent venom. Uh, this is cool. I like this. Uh, so we, are, we got a super rare agent venom, which is cool. I like agent venom. I don't want to get a super rare version of them. And now we're going to get two uh, agent venoms as well as a Flash Thompson. So, I mean, do you have the list pulled up that has all these guys from left to right? Yeah. You can sort of stay on track. Okay, so sweet. also let's do that before I just start rattling off names. Good lord. Also, just to like clue everyone in, these images are on the WizKids uh, e-store under the like Spider-Man yes. pre-sale. So if you like scroll down, they've got images of like the boosters, and then eventually they have just I don't know, like about forty figures, just like posted. Just it seems fairly random what they put up um but from left to right kind of zigzagging a little bit uh we have some guy i don't yes, know he's correct it, it looks almost like harry osborne but it's impossible to tell from the picture well we um, already we already have harry osborne for sure so we don't know yeah who that is. uh the oh, second dude. with uh, multiple arms and a red suit is carnage minion so he's gonna be like hmm. some sort of cheap uh symbiote uh, attacking kind of piece dude walking uh, in at 30 points baby Ooh, yeah 
then we've got Scorn, which of course is another symbiote. Uh, Harry Osborn, Steampunk Penny Parker. So this is the actual sculpt, not the digital rendition. Yes. Um, we have Venomized Strange, which mm. is pretty cool sculpt. Hopefully he's really cool dial. Uh, Superior Spider-Man, Black Cat, Riot, which is just big, beefy, Venom-looking dude. Uh, you might know it from the really cool Venom movie that came out. Um, mm. Iron Fist, Hammerhead, Scream, and then back over to the left, Iron Man, Bombshell, Norman Osborn, Deathlock, uh, Daniel Burkhart, and then two powers. Uh, yes, Daniel Burkhart. Yes, my favorite. <laughs> Uh, and then Double Prowler, which, I mean, sure, we haven't had one in a while, so well, we'll, might as well get to uh, Normal Prowler and then Ultimate's Prowler. So, like, yeah. Miles' is uncle. Uh, I like Normal Prowler a lot. This is a super rare, I think. Uh, Absolute Carnage, Agent Ooh, Anti-Venom, uh, Peter Parker, Venom, Bombshell. Uh, Bombshell's back mm-hmm. on the left, so we're going all the way back over to the left. And uh, so it's Bombshell, Agent Venom, Iron Spider, which is Uncle Aaron. He's in the similar mm-hmm. Three Waldos suit. Uh, Eddie Brock, Black Widow, which is Jessica Drew, uh, Marvell, Gwen Stacy, Shriek, Toxin, Superior Spider oh, that's, Arms that's Object. Mar Marvella, sir. Oh, Marvelli. Marvella. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Like 15 um, points. She's got a cape. She's a superhero. So we've got the superior spider arms. I, That's Marvella. That babe. looks like right. the most breakable object in the game. Um, oh, the, the Waldos? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bad yeah, boys so get broken. I can't imagine what those do that the Auk arms don't, um, unless it's like perplex or something. But Dude, I, Let's uh, make it... Uh, Flurry with three attacks, giant reach four. That's what we, that's what we need in this game. It's definitely going to be like improvement out. of some Four sort. Yeah. At the very least. Yeah, sorry. And then Let's get through this list no idea. before I uh, interjecting you. My- so the next, after the spider arms, is Spider-Man Peter, Spider-Man Miles, and then Green Goblin, Flash Thompson, American Son, which is oh, yeah, the- baby. Calder's Calder's favorite character now. Mm, uh, correct. He decided to change it up. Um, then what we think is the new Deathlock, then the Pumpkin Bombs, the Carnage Symbiote, and at the very bottom, uh, what looks like Spot. He's Spot. Like in like a weird Spot. teleportation Spot. kind of thing. Yeah. Spot. Oh, the, what looks like. So it could here's be what a Dalmatian. This is what I'm, ha- this is what I'm happy about. Um, hopefully, since we're getting an Iron Man, by the way, I hate the Iron Man. This is a pooping sculpt. They are crouched over. They got their hands back. This is like a Dragon Ball Z yelling. They, they're about to poop. It's literally what the Iron Man sculpt looks like. I hate it when they do sculpts like this. Like 1602, uh, Tony Stark, Crossbones, um, Bullseye sculpt. Where they just got their hands out and they're crouching. Like, no one did that in 1602. Like, they look like weird monkeys, like monkey people. Like, what do you, why are you posed like that? I don't know why they have such a terrible sculpt. Literally, if it's an Iron Man character, have them stand one arm by their side, the other hand just out, going to do a repulsor blast. Like, that's a thousand times better than this weird going to take a poop or they're about to crouch and jump off and propel themselves into the sky or something. Like, I don't know what they're doing. I hate it. Um, So, a few things to note that I like about this. New characters we've never seen before that have been in comics apparently since 2009. American Son, I didn't know existed, you know, has never crossed over with Captain America. He's Harry Osborn in the armor or um, Gabriel Stacy in the armor, depending on who it is, um, which is neat. I just had to look that up on Wikipedia here. As well as the Venom Strange. So I don't know if Venom Strange was in a actual Marvel series. I know he's in the Contest of Champions fighting game which gives me hope that they're allowed to use or like pull characters from the contest of champions fighting game. Cause that would be awesome. Cause I really want a guillotine and a civil warrior and a Howard, the duck from that game. That'd be great, uh, but maybe not. They probably used venomized strange. 
for some time in comics or this I mean, might be another case of venom captain america or like whatever where they just them for whatever yeah. reason you know so this we don't know the best set to introduce uh venom howard the duck oh yeah oh, i love that i would love that so much you have no idea guys you have no idea but yeah i'm loving that we're seeing characters uh new ones that we haven't seen since web of spider-man right the spots a normal version of eddie brock as just like a dude you know that's probably going to secret identity into a venom which is sweet yeah stuff like that the venom all that stuff it's great so like characters we haven't seen uh, norman a normal norman osborne that's gonna instead of alter egoing he's gonna secret identity into green goblin hopefully we get an iron patriot imagine if we're getting an american son and a normal iron man that they'll use that that sculpt one more time guy in armor pooping uh which is going to be an iron patriot which is literally just going to be the american son but like with a star on the chest instead of like a eagle or whatever is there instead then maybe even a war machine. They might even give us a war machine in this set for like no good reason, you know, to reuse that sculpt one last time, baby. <laughs> so I like everything. I like everything we're seeing. Um, I know I've in the past been like, I don't like Spider-Man that much. I don't like him in other sets, but in this set where it's like, it's going to be Spider-Man themed and flavored. I'm loving it. I'm loving this set for totally Spider-Man related stuff. I'm mad that they're giving Spider-Man equipment when they wasted all the Earth X equipment on Spider-Man stuff, and I needed to quit bringing it up. It's in the past. It's over. They ruined Earth X by giving Spider-Man all the equipment, and they ruined it by having Spider-Man in there in the first place. I'm going to quit saying that, but I got to, you know, I got to bring it up, guys. But I am excited for this set. I'll probably, at the very least, get a case of this Spider-Man set for sure. No. So I'm excited for it. Even seeing these uncommons, mostly just like all uncommons and stuff, it's stuff I want, you know? So it's cool. What do you think, Simeon? What are your thoughts, opinions, on a, on old shirtless Iron Fist here, which I'm just happy because it's oh. just it's a new version of Iron Fist. It's not yeah. just generic green Iron Fist. Or, you know, we're getting Hammerhead. We're getting all sorts of cool stuff. What do you think of seeing all these these uh, these poison characters? Um, poisons, yeah. Like I, uh, I already hate shape changes like a power. Like I I like having it on my characters. I hate dealing with it. Is it um, uh, doesn't work for you. It'll Why? really. It'll really depend on what all the equipments do and what their rarities are to determine if I like buy heavily into the set because that's ultimately gonna like I already have enough of this stuff in Golden Age between Spider Man and Carnage and uh, just random symbiote stuff. I'm not like a huge symbiote fan, so I don't need Riot. I don't need Scorn. I don't need really any of them. Uh, the Doctor Strange is really cool. So yeah. I'll probably want to get that, even if he's bad. I just really like the sculpt. Uh, I don't honestly need another Superior Spider-Man. I really like the Deadpool set one. Yeah, but it is—it's looking cool. Um, I'm pretty sure the pumpkin bombs are a common object, so that's cool. Ooh. If they—if they do like common, uncommon, like I think the only. Uh, uncommon object that we had was the blood axe otherwise everything's like starter ellie or super air and higher kind of thing there's a few rumors all about that popper popper object use i, th I yeah. think it's probably a rare <laughs> i i feel like it's going to be a rare be it could be. like if it yeah. looks white it's probably silver and i feel like it's going to be a rare just just because they haven't given us common uncommon objects since you know the mighty thor set and they've never given us common objects right uh, so i feel like no. it's probably gonna be a rare. i don't think yeah so it's probably going to be a rare sorry to, i don't want to like burst your bubble or anything i would love it to be a common object that'd be great um, but yeah okay anything else you want to go ahead and say about uh about this Dope spread of Spider-Man related characters. Uh, it comes out in what about two weeks, which means that uh, <laughs> two weeks is it in our, August. Is our it really? first episode Man. of Scott Porter unboxings <sighs> should have dropped today, and it didn't. So, what's going Correct, on? Correct, it is a Monday. That's Where the are time you? of this recording? God, are you okay? Blink. Do I gotta twice? Do I gotta tweet you out again? <laughs> yeah, please don't. Don't bother that man. He's he's too beautiful the way it is. Just leave him be. Leave him be. He's on his own schedule. Or he's probably on Whiskey's schedule, really. I imagine he's already filmed this unboxing. Yeah, like, he, he had already it had the when product. He did the fantastic. And when he so. replied to us, by the way, to us, he replied to us. We didn't even add him, and he replied to us, saying, "Scott Porter, big fan of the show. Love your support, Scott." 
and love you, my man. Heart of Dixie, I'm sure it's great. I have seen Speed Racer, though. Love you in that. Yeah. Give me some Speed Racer. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited about this. The only thing I'm worried about is it in Sealed, which doesn't matter because I'm not going to play any Sealed of this set. It's just the way it be sometimes. But um, there's a lot of normal dudes, right? Harry Osborne, Norman Osborne, uh, Eddie Brock, Flash Thompson, this Daniel guy, it's Marvella chick. Like, a very real, like, this is very much an incredible Hulk set all over again, where there's so much alter ego, just like normal people, that unless you get a really good, like a really good plus 75 something point character, you might kind of be hurting, you know? Yeah. So, like, when, like maybe you get, has you know, like Iron a- Fist as your plus 75 and you're like dang but he's not ranged or whatever right but if your opponent or some crazy blasphemy sword green goblin there's no way i'm ever going to not call it the blasphemy sword by the way it's too good um it's it's going to be rough so i am slightly worried about this set in sealed which probably doesn't matter for the actual amounts of people having sealed events but because there are stores open and having events like true kings we will probably do a sealed primer on this episode or on one of these one of these episodes for sure but i am worried about all the normal dudes just like you know if your team is full of yeah just like eddie brocks and flash thompsons and stuff it's gonna be rough or zero point prowlers you know yeah <laughs> he might not be zero points but he legit looks like he's zero points you look at his like he's zero points. like i don't it doesn't even look like his leg is covering it dude i swear he looks like he's zero points like he's a common I mean, it's very possible. Like, there's no way misprinted. There's no way zero one points, of the right? dials. That I think it's misprinted. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's a. Uh, I don't mind some of these repaints too. Like, if you want to ever make yourself in hero clicks, like, grab a Peter Parker or like a Flash Thompson. <laughs> like, you, like repaint it because they're like just dudes in jackets, you know. Or, uh, yeah, or if you like literally. wearing. Very Osborne. We got the one in the pocket and the one going like the hey, what's up? You know, just kind of like looking for a handout almost. So like if you ever just want to do a quick repaint and put yourself in hero clicks and you want to do a slightly cool or powerful pose, be like uh, Eddie Brock, hands on the hips there, like dude in a jacket if you want to. Like I, I dig I kind of dig normal pedestrian sculpts like that, just for the fact um it's pretty good for like customizability and stuff and repainting. So yeah, I don't think there's much else I want to say. I'm excited for this set. I really am. As a non-Spider-Man fan, I'm excited for this set. Yeah. Anything enough. you want to say, Simeon, we, no. before we move on? <laughs> I uh, Real quick. Yeah. We I've got said my piece on the set. I'll need to see a lot more before I make a big decision uh, on it. I'm already getting a case. But no, probably not. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Now I'm probably going to get a case. I don't know why I keep going back and forth. All right. Really quickly, uh, Killer Bunny Pogs, and I am here for it. We got Sidestep Blades, Combat Reflexes. They're not autonomous, which bothers me, but they are tiny. And they're the cutest little picture of a bunny. I don't want to have to buy this token pack, but um, the fact that it gives you two bunnies and then two robot minions makes me think there's not going to be a lot more Pog generators in the set. But as we know with F4, uh, there are people that make Pogs that just won't have Pogs in the starter. But since there are two Killer Bunnies and two robot minions, I hope... I hope that um, that there that there aren't any more pogs than these, and then this is the this is how many you need because the robot minions is based off of the Mysterio Fast Forces trait. He's got a trait that lets him bring it in. We have the front of these cards, by the way, guys. We got a thick Carnage where he's not all skinny and spindly, which is cool. Uh, we have Black Cat, Spider Man, Venom, Ghost Spider, Mysterio, and that's pretty cool. They all a lot of them have the uh, symbiote trait, which is just the shape change plasticity. Spider-Man, a quick interesting thing, he has a trait called Marvel Team-Up, which is really sick. So when establishing theme teams, choose a named keyword, and characters on your starting force have the Spider-Man, uh, starting force, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read this, goodness gracious, has Spider-Man gains a keyword. So you basically to choose Spider-Man or someone named Spider-Man on your team to gain that keyword, which is really cool. That is establishing a theme team. So it's not force construction or whatever, but it's when you establish a theme team, which is basically the same thing, you know, because it's before the game, you roll, you establish theme teams, and you roll. So it's kind of the same thing, really. That's neat. So I like that. It's also a Spider-Man that has leadership for some reason, which is really odd for Spider-Man, but I'm cool with it. And then, yeah. So Fast Forces is cool. Token Pack is cool. Uh, On the flip side of the tokens, it's all Alex Ross art. Oh, sorry. It's almost all Alex Ross art. There's like two of them, I guess. And then we got a cool Carnage, cool Venom, 
a uh, a Morlin dude with who's got like white hair and very pale skin. So I feel like a vampire could be someone else. I guess Morbius. I don't know. Uh, Morlin or Morbius. Yes, yeah, it could be Morbius, but I don't remember him having white hair. No, no but I don't know. That's true. So yeah. yeah, but that's enough about that's enough. I'm done with Spider Man. If you're done with Spider Man, I don't need to keep ranting and raving. I am done with it. Yeah, good. Good. All right. Let's uh let's go ahead and uh, jump to a Thread Dead Redemption, shall we? Friend, I just wanted to play. Now, firstly, we ain't friends. Don't make no mistake on that subject. Now, secondly, he can't hardly see, let alone reason. Now, reasoning ain't never been one of my strong points, neither, but see and I do just fine. Redemption is a show or a segment that we like to do from time to time where we'll find threads you know, somewhere on the internet that are hero clicks related, we'll kind of go into them. We're going to rate to the thread and give our thoughts and opinions on it. We're going to see if we can maybe redeem the thread a little bit in our own way. So we got a great thread on HC Realms by uh, Clam Marie, Clam Mary, Mer- 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 whatever. Uh, C-A- like C-A- a Claymore. Clam Meyer? I don't know. Clam Meyer? Is that where we're going? Well, I don't want to get into Claymore country just yet, but uh, we'll see. So he's talking about uh, home rules to play old figures. So this is what he says. Here are some points that he makes, and then we're going to go ahead and give our thoughts on it. So when you KO something, you get to score the number of points on the dial. Whatever the reduction is, he's going to talk about his reductions here in a bit. It could have been altered. It doesn't matter. A figure that costs 154 by official rules will always bring you 154 points, even if it was reduced to 135 due to home rules below. And you're like, whoa, why is it getting reduced? Let's check out these home rules. Figures that have a cost that is not a multiple of five get their cost reduced to the nearest multiple of five. I'm going to assume that these are all during uh, team or force construction. Otherwise, you'd be like, this doesn't make any sense. Super weird. So I'm going to assume this is all during force construction. So 38. And you always round down is what he's trying to say. So you always round down to the nearest uh, multiple of five. So 38 becomes 35. 154 becomes 150. All right. Makes sense. Figures that have a card in the old card format, so that's the no dial on the back, the superior card format where um, it wasn't all jam-packed to the side with weird writing um, and a big stupid picture of the character on the back and instead, whatever, we're not going to get into it. Figures that have a card in the old card format uh, get an additional discount of 5 points on their cost or even 15 points instead if they are in a set older than giant size X-Men. Um... It should be all characters um, that have non orior dials at the very least. Not giant size X-Men, but like from Captain America back off 15 points. Now, obviously, there are some exceptions to this rule, like some characters that are still bonkers for their points a day, like that Scarlet Witch from Avengers who's 35 points. But um, in that, I think it's fine. right? So they get 15 points off. All right. So they get the five points off and then 15 points off instead. So instead of the five, they get 15, right? And then it's still also, after that, it still goes down to the nearest multiple of five. Okay. Uh, Whatever the reduction that we use, a character cost cannot be reduced below 25 points using those rules, all right? And a character that already costs lower than 25 just keeps their unchanged cost or they're rounded down to the nearest of five. So I feel like if a character is nine points, they probably shouldn't be touched. I'm not gonna get in too much of my opinions. I'm gonna keep reading his stuff first. Here's that don't have a card get 15 points discounted in those two and these two abilities this is where it gets a little weird so they get 15 points off obviously can't be lower than 25 and then they get these two abilities number one is not so special this character attacks you may replace its attack value with nine if its printed value is eight or lower in this it, then if this character attacks an opposing character possessing a special power or trait modify this character's attack value by an additional plus one so lowest this character can have isn't going to be like a five or a six and how terribly and awfully crippling it can be instead they'll have a nine attack which is you know a below average attack value but still more understandable than a five or six and then if they attack someone that's newer right has a special power or trait they an additional plus one so they have a 10 attack basically for two they have easier to heal but not to deal with when this character is attacked you may replace its defense value with 16 if its printed value is 15 or lower Oh, that's also super solid for a lot of characters that have like a 12 defense value. So I, I don't mind these two powers. Uh, and lastly, he has, remember that if I use them, it's in a home game, mostly using Kerr figures. So commons and commons rares from all the ages and avoiding special objects, team bases, resources, ID cards, and other non-figure game elements. What do you think about those rules? 
do you see something that could go awfully wrong or be abused? You challenge them a bit or come up with additional ideas. Now, this is why we're doing it, because he also is straight up asking for thoughts and opinions. For example, we hesitated to play with 9 and 16 or 8 and 15 as minimum values for older figures. But with today's numbers, it seems 9 and 16 are mandatory. We are still testing. I really want to have nice games with my family and friends with good chance for everyone to get to play his or her favorite characters without needing to buy more figures if they already own some. That is the end of his spiel. Simeon, what do you think about these rules and kind of how he goes into uh, playing home rules uh, to play old figures, to make them more usable? What's up, man? Your thoughts, um, your opinions. Just on the surface, it's not a bad uh, it's not a bad way to go about overhauling like full uh, eras of figures. So if you had to if I had to generalize like how would you fix like this entire like you know however long back cycle of like figures it's not a bad way of doing that uh it really isn't um the problem comes in where his his point deficit doesn't keep up with how quickly points became like kind of irrelevant for modern so there's a lot of like 200 like 150 to 200 plus uh, figures with no indom and he doesn't have anything in there to fix that so I would say like in addition to his rules here I would say like if their printed point value is over X where X is like I don't know 125 if their point value on their dial is over 125 they get the indom symbol because for a long time there weren't any figures that had it um and then for a while they like overcosted it as well so yeah. that's my first thought uh my second thought is nines and 16s are as far as like making making a really cheap figure that wouldn't normally have a nine attack giving them a nine attack might make them really good i don't think with like a few exceptions there's there's a few and i know there's a few but um with only a few exceptions there's very few ki figures that have less than a nine tech even in modern right now i think that a nine is just a little too low if you're gonna if you're going to like make that the average attack i think right. that 10 is fair well um we think about how many characters besides like single base, whatever. So like, let's say this is all a game that is totally no cards. It's all the figures that are in the non carded era. It means the lowest someone needs an average of seven to hit. Right. Which is fair. I think that's yeah, a fair thing. Right. They have true. the lowest of a 16 and you have a nine attack. So I think in that point, it's fair. If we look at it's into a carded age. Now, the majority of figures that we played with, um, from the beginning of the carded age that even had special powers were very were varied for sure um but even then that's still in that same age where a nine and a 16 seven to hit is pretty fair because they still had low stats in that first carded era and we move on to the second carded era where we were hard pressed to find a character that didn't have a trait at the very least or some special power you no know? right so i feel like then having 10 attack isn't so bad. Plus, they also have other modifiers to deal with, right? So, I don't have a huge problem with the um, with the plus one and giving them a ten attack. So, I think it's fine because then if they had a minimum ten, right, then they would have an eleven against them, which might seem a little unfair, maybe a little bit too much. So, I think that's, that's fairly true. balanced yeah. at the very least. I'll take. I'll take. When, when I look back. at it, there's that aspect. Okay. there's actually a decent number of uh, modern figures with a nine, and it's remedied by. Uh, perplexes and other stat modifier kind of things. So, yeah, you wouldn't want to give like some really cheap older figure that has like flurry blades a uh, ten, and then just have like a huge swarm of them. So, I get, I guess, yeah, I get that. Um, let me see. The other thing, I don't know. I just don't understand. Uh, I don't understand his his point reduction kind of. Um, point reduction is a little weird. Yeah, right? it just seems... So I think only taking 
10 points off, it works if you're under like 100 points. Yeah. If you're under 100, it should yeah, be scaled. Take 15 off. It should be it scaled should be to, to scale, the printed right? value. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, you really don't need to take a lot of points off of any character that's like 25 and under. But once you get up into like the like 300 range where you've got like the older, the really crazy big hitters from back in the day, like Ares and Superman and all those like, you know, high stat things like the KC figures and stuff. When you get into their really high point values, uh, taking off 25 is not going to bring them up to like modern. Uh, It probably won't even bring them out of whatever age they're in. Like if they were pre-carded, it's not going to bring them up to carded age as far as point values. They just, they got power creeped too hard, too fast. So, so let's go ahead, say what green lantern or somebody for a non carded tent pole, like Casey green lantern. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, yeah, cool. He's got a 20 defense, right? But he's still insane for not insane but he's still insanely like easy to deal with like a 20 we've already talked about like 20 isn't much you know i'm trying to find him here goodness gracious i can't but um he has no reducer right so i feel like if you're over a certain point value and you have no reducer you should at least get invulnerability you know so because there's like green lanterns that are 130 something points like let's take this one alan scott 214 points he's an 18 with barrier no indom so i think if you're over 200 points and you don't have a damage reducer you should get invulnerability and you should get willpower, you know, or indomitable, right? That makes this dude. And then let's say we round him down. He's 210. Let's say he's over 200 points. We take 20 points off. So like 10 for every 100 points. So we make him 190 instead. 190, then his new minimums. I think this 078 Green Lantern, fairly playable. Whenever he doesn't have a damage reducer, he gets invulnerability instead. At least he gets the highest one on his dial. Sure, let's say that. He has invulnerability now. Yeah. That. Another I problem. Think if we're like that you know what do you think about that so here's a another top problem we run into uh okay. with this this old casey green lantern from the legacy set yeah. uh the one that starts with the, points, right? yeah 225 no reducer, at all. No uh, reducer. yeah okay. yeah zero reducer is whole dial um if we were plugging in in dom then we've got to fix his printed willpower as well mm-hmm. uh so like maybe he gets energy shield and like toughness um i don't know i'm not sure yeah, and how also, we would go about uh, play doing that civic figures you know then you have to get, disregard a formula maybe it's maybe it's better to not have a formula in the first place and then be like okay specific figures for this game should we give them to make them fair you know if we're just doing house rule games and it's not going to be like at a venue where these are the rules i think if we're looking at this as a home game then add as many rules like as you want to make a certain figure good, right? You're playing the old zombie chases that don't have uh, the cool zombie abilities. Just say they have those traits and then like toughness, right? And that makes them a thousand times better for their points, right? So like, boom, like there's a simple home rule that doesn't follow a formula that makes them better, you know? Yeah. If we want it to follow a formula though, looking at this Green Lantern, the max he has taken off is 15 points. So he's still 210 points, Right. And then like that's it. His minimum right. instead of having a seven and eight, it's nine. It's not. He's still not really playable. Like say what you will about Casey, super senses. You know, twenty defense. That's great and all. Back up for two hundred, even at two hundred and ten points, he still isn't worth two hundred ten points, really. So I would say a character over a hundred, if they have no reducer, they get toughness. A character over 200, they have no reducer. Like printed 200, they have no reducer. They get invulnerability, et cetera. 300 impervious. For so, sure. There's no 400 character, I don't think, out there. We and also... Would you think that would be cool, like a way to scale it, you think? I think, yeah. I think if you're not doing it case to case, that'd be a good way to do it, like yeah. based on just points. The formulaic way um, is what I mean. Sorry. keep. There's also, uh, I think, like the majority of hero clicks actually doesn't have any pink powers so uh like no so side true, steps yeah. and invincibles and precision strike so sticking with this kc green lantern since we're already talking about him uh he has two clicks of He's running shot yeah. and then 
he goes to four clicks where he just loses any speed power. And so I don't, there's no way to like catch all that. Like with, yeah. uh, just like being like, you know, all these old figures, like keep speed and like moving attack powers. But right. on a fig to fig basis, you say, I could say I like, going, he just has running shot. shot his whole dial up until like click nine where he loses it again. Okay. All right, take away from fig to fig basis. Let's say if it doesn't have a card or it's it's not an Oreo dial, right? Any or maybe we could just do any time before pink powers. If they don't have a printed speed power, they can use sidestep instead. Yeah. Would that maybe a better like case to case thing? Be, so now that's yeah, like be a decent catch all. It's more balanced than like saying everybody without a card or before Oreo dials get sidestep because then all of a sudden characters that have stealth have sidestep, which makes them way better type of deal which isn't going to be crippling but like let's say boom the shield agent 10 points well now he got sidestep and shield which probably makes him worth 10 points instead of just having shield you now same thing shield medic now they have sidestep and support etc cetera, etc cetera. just looking at infinity challenge stuff and like vulture he's got no powers at all except for flight now he's got sidestep you know not so bad for 20 something points now you know, and he's yeah. got a new minimum nine attack, sixteen defense, etc. So I'm just kind of looking through a few different dials here. Like constrictor, with that green lantern. He's got, the, uh, he's got twelve range. Sidestep when he doesn't have running shot, not bad. Veteran constrictor has six clicks of incapacitate and nothing else. His bottom click ah. is a uh, four attack, eleven defense. So with this formula, he'd be at a nine attack, sixteen defense with in cap. Not bad, not worth the fifty six points, but like not bad. Uh, okay. And then if we throw a sidestep on top of that, he's like actually mobile, and he can actually take uh, some use out of that sinister syndicate team ability. So like, yeah, this is an infinity challenge as well. Um, Kingpin, who only brings in like a leadership for <laughs> apparently martial artists, this is only key weird. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what this guy's. I don't know what he was doing. Uh, sharing his eight attack. I don't. I don't know. Um, but this Kingpin, <laughs> he'd at least like be mobile for his. Yeah. There's no fixing this guy. Um, He's just okay. We'll go to well, a let's different. Do, person. Let's do an opposite end of the spectrum. Oh, sorry. You want to finish? You want no. To that choose. that Kingpin was just a really bad example because he just really That's terrible. Bad. He's just choose really a bad. You look for a different example. I'm going to talk about a character who I think still works in the formula. Air Lord. 95 points instead of 97 points. And let's say using our formula, he has sidestep his whole dial. He's not broken. He doesn't get a defense reducer because he's not over 100, right? I said over 100, he gets toughness. He's not. And then his lowest defense is 16 now, which is just fair because it after his 16, he instantly drops to a 13, which is a joke. Right. His nine attack only works on the back four clicks of his dial. So that's not bad. So now he's just kind of worth 95 points. It's He's still great, right? He's got 13 attack, three damage, range combat expert. But, at, you know, once again, we're saying no willpower unless they're over 100, right? Let's just say they start getting willpower at over 100. Still fine and just good in a casual game setting when he's got sidestep his whole dial because otherwise he has nothing. Sidestep with range combat expert or sidestep with pulse wave. That's not bad. I think that's pretty solid. And if we say their highest defense, what what did he say on printed? Because he's got ESD, right? So then he'd be an 18 from range. What does he say? Uh, this character's attacked. You may replace its defense value with 16 if its printed value is 15 or lower. So he would have an 18 on ESD. We could say their lowest defense is 16. That way, his ESD doesn't do anything, and it doesn't make him crazy good in the like their the lowest random modified defense. ESD. Yeah, their lowest minimum defense is 16. Let's is that right? The maximum minimum are key terms. If I'm remembering correctly, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. I get a lot of things wrong. I got things wrong now earlier in the show, so I won't take offense to it. Yeah, like I think that Fire Lord isn't busted for 95 points with sidestep the whole dial. Even with the whole 13 for 3 range combat expert, I think that's pretty fair for yeah. stuff today. Because I can just as easily make anything today a 13 for way more than 3. And then uh, we look at, let's do Kang. 133 points. Uh, Kang is just right above Fire Lord and Ultron here. So if we look at Ultron, he's 111 points. 
Uh, let's let's do the veteran here since you're doing veterans. We'll give him sidestep his whole dial. We'll give him willpower because he's over that. So instead of being 188, let's say he's 15 less. Round it down. So he is uh, what? He goes to 185, 15 minus that is 170. Now that Ultron's 170, sidestep his whole dial. He has willpower. Now he's got toughness on the back three clicks at the very least. Yeah. 170 will at least get his 14, 10 range triple bolt energy explosion off, probably. No. Well, yeah. And he's got he's got 10 range, so like you're paying you're paying 170, but he's a yep. he's a high ranged attacker. No improved targeting, of course. That's another thing that we can't take into effect mm. is none of these yeah, guys would have that. improved targeting. Um, but yeah, a 10 range for 170 with sidestep 14 attack top dial. I could see that actually working. Okay. I think another good option is this Thanos because, Ooh, okay. So not only does he not have power cosmic or willpower at all, um, he's a 13 for three. And so we'd also maybe have to like work something into damage potentially, but 13 for 3, 10 attack, 2 lightning bolts, but his back dial, let's see, click 6, he goes from invuln, his first 5 clicks, to a 15 with toughness, then a 14, 13, 12, 11, and then a 10 with regen. And so that's just, that's rough all the way down. Um, For 185 points, well, he would be rounded down to... 170 again. 170 this again. This dude's uh, formula, yeah, he's 170. So let's say he's got sidestep his whole dial now. He's got the whole minimum nine attack, which only affects his last click. He's got minimum 16 defense, which actually affects more than half his dial. So, and do they always get the plus one, I guess, against people? Let me double check that. Uh, not so special. When this character attacks me, replaces attack value with nine. It's printed as lower. That's period. And if this character attacks an opposing character possessing a special power trait, modify attack value, discipline plus one. So they'll always get a plus one, no matter where they're at in their dial against a character with a special power. So it, it, he would be a 14 attack right away against someone with a special power, which isn't terrible. Then let's say we give him, I would give a Thanos power cosmic. You know, we could say the normal formula can have exceptions, but like if they have the cosmic keyword, uh, even then they shouldn't all get power cosmic, right? But like Thanos, yeah. I think this one obviously has the Infinity Gauntlet. Yes. So, like, we could give this Thanos the Infinity Gauntlet. And then maybe, I don't want to do make it two case-by-case basis, but, like, re-equip him with, like, two gems or something. You know, like, two of the modern gems. Yeah. would obviously be a case-by-case basis. I don't want to do too much of that. I would like to uh, and make I mean, more of a point formula. So, let's say if they're over 100, maybe 25 points off. Because then this guy is uh, 60 points. You're like, okay, 60 points, and then we give him the sidestep and the minimum nine attack. 160 with willpower? That's good. That's yeah. very solid with this Thanos. It's still not as say over crazy as uh, Ultra Chase Thanos. Yeah. But we're not going for No. We're not going for not like going broken for or uh comparable to like uh high level modern. Um and this Thanos attack values are solid, so he doesn't need a ton of help. But let's see, like click three when he's got a 15 for four. Um, I'd be lying if I said I didn't ever put this guy in a Thanos copter. But uh, you push him to click three and then put him in. Uh, but no, I think at the very least willpower. If like if you don't, maybe we should have like a, a variable point thing where if you don't drop their point value... And they're over a certain level. You can yeah. opt in like power cosmic. So yeah. I wouldn't have a problem with like Nightmare and Thanos having power cosmic. Um, I wouldn't want like certain characters. Uh, Fire Lord, of course, like should have yeah. power cosmic, but he's already right. costed yeah. at ninety seven. So we're already getting a deal there. Uh, yeah, we're giving him. 95 and then this is minimum with this let me double, double check some of this dude's minimums so i just wrote down really quickly if they have no movement power they get sidestep if they are over 100 let's give them a maximum of minus 25 and then they have toughness when they don't have a reducer and they get willpower now willpower and then 
all this is going to be continuing. So over 200, let's say negative 35, no reducer, they get invulnerability instead, and obviously willpower. Over 300 or 300 and over, let's do a negative 45, they'll get imperv or in or invincible, depending on what you say, and then obviously willpower. What do you think about that type of scaling for points wise? That seems, 35, 45. Yeah, that seems more fair because I'm no mathematician. Sorry, yeah. guys. So. <laughs> If I'm, no, I'm just like spitballing here. To be honest, if I'm like pulling some of these older figures that I have out, and most of the ones that I have are these kind of like iconic figures. So yeah. sticking with Infinity Challenge, it's like I have that Thanos, that Nightmare, uh, the Doctor Strange, and who was the really cool, um, the Magneto from the set. So like okay. sticking with the characters that I actually care about and kind of pick out of these older sets that seems pretty fair because i'm normally going with like the more high po- high costed figures uh this guy he did say that they were mostly playing common uncommon rare stuff okay and so if we let's finish up like what we're talking about and then we'll shift over to the common yeah. uncommon rare so sure, sure. Time to talk about beefy dudes. So yeah, yeah, and with like the beefy dudes, which is what I think most people are gonna like reach back for if you're doing Golden mm-hmm. Age and you're doing like a fun game and you want the old Thanos to like have a chance. I think that what we're what we've got makes sense. I think at the very least, giving him like sidestep. So you're not giving him like a huge advantage, but sidestep mm-hmm. is always relevant. It's always a power that's worth having. He does have flight. Flight with sidesteps really good for yeah. carrying people, uh, and then modifying his uh, reducers and his like defense values. Bottom dial actually makes yep. Thanos like worth worth playing past top dial, and that's the problem. That's I think that's the real big problem with uh, older stuff is they stop being worth playing after they get knocked off their top dial. Once they get to like click four or five, you're kind of just done, even though they're not KO'd. Do uh, you usually so, like dropped in stats to the point where they're just not a threat anymore? Another thing we kind of talked about um, that you were more that you brought up was there like Thanos has like a two damage. Should we, when they're above a hundred points, give them a minimum three damage or maybe a plus one damage modifier when targeting somebody? with a trait or special power, kind of like uh, what he has with attack. So could we do, they have a minimum three damage, and then they always get a plus one damage if they target someone with a trait or special power, or is that too much? Because then then Thanos is like shooting, you know, 14 for four top dial if they have a trait or special, or should we just say once they're over 100, should have a minimum three. What do you think? I think instead of a modifier, we do another power thing. So, oh, man. Like, would you just say I'd if they say have no damage power, we give them a they, power? Kind of like going a sidestep? Or... If they don't have a printed attack power, let's say if they don't have a printed attack power and there are over 100 points, they can use Precision Strike. Okay. Is that Because you, you can only single target with, with Precision Strike now. So only single target... Um, and it doesn't help out the people with energy explosion or in cap. It's only going to help out the people like Thanos here who have nothing. And then on his on his dial where he's got twos, so from click six to click eleven, where he's only doing two damage, he can still at least do one. So go. he's not okay. overpowered, Solid. but he's still doing at least like one. A good way to solve the damage crisis we had. Okay, I like that. I dig it. If we're saying no printed attack, they'll get precision strike. Like giving pink powers for sure. I think that's the way to go. Instead of maybe like saying, oh, he can just pick a power, you know, like then I guess he'll have pulse wave the whole time or pen blast the whole time. I think giving precision strike is pretty solid. Um, because then we don't have to mess with damage modifiers either. But this guy didn't do a lot of giving out powers either. So we're just trying to expand on how uh his setup is with our kind of new quote unquote formula. Like I said, I'm not a mathematician. I'm not even but at math in general. So take take my formula very like salt. If you have any ideas, guys, please send them in what you think about this formula or uh, the gentleman's formula that we're doing. 
Clamier, Clamier, Claymore, whatever his name is. Um, I'm sorry, I just genuinely don't know how to pronounce it. Should have checked. I should have like tried beforehand, but I didn't. Let's um, let's switch gears here. We we're kind of figuring out the beefy guys. Let's look at did a lot of stuff with no cards. Now let's go to a set with cards, lower point guys, or we could do no cards. Lower point. Guys. So the minimum is going to be 25 that they can ever be. They can't get below that. So let's do a support figure or a lower point figure from just another non-card set. I'm going to choose uh, Easy Company Medic. With our formula, the guy just has sidestep. He'll have a minimum nine attack. It's only when he makes attacks and the 16 defense when he is attacked. So he's still just an eight attack medic dude, right? I believe with this dude's home rules. Uh, yes, yeah, so when this character attacks and it's not an attack when you roll for support anymore. So... He's fine. He just gets sidestep now. That's it. He doesn't get toughness or willpower or anything. So like that's that's okay, I think. Now, on the flip side, fifty-one point LexCore battle suit is is still bad because um, all he's getting is sidestep his whole dial, and I think he gets ten points off. Or no, he's he's a, he's the full fifteen points off. So rounds down to fifty instead of fifty-one. Uh, Thirty-five points. So for 35 points, sidestep, Superman, enemy, minimum 16 defense. He's not actually a terrible generic for armor keyword Metropolis. If you're looking at 018 LexCore Battlesuit from Cosmic Justice, that is totally based on this dude's formula, which also works with our formula, right? Because we're just adding on at higher point values. What do you think? I mean, this guy just now has sidestep. And actually, uh, Precision Strike. No, no. Precision Strike is only for if they're over 100, right? Is that what we said? Yeah. Or no printed attack power at all. Over 100. Okay, so if they're so, over 100, no print attack, but you get precision strike. This does. dude just has like sidestep and a minimum 16, 9, but he's only yeah. 30 points now, or 35 points. It so does make his, uh, he's actually not bad. His rookie points. dial, like, bad. It, I mean, it makes his, his rookie dial doesn't get that much better. Uh, he's still right, so like a cheap taxi. Now. Yeah. yeah. He's, so he's like Superman enemy. Yeah, cheap taxi with Superman enemy, but he's not, he's an. Uh, a nine for one with 16 defense. So like maybe he's a tie up, uh, but he's not going to like win you games. And I kind of like that. I kind of, I don't want to yeah. like beef up the, the cheaper dudes too much. Low Cause difference. then you could just, mm -hmm. you know, play a swarm of all these like 25 point guys with precision strike, nine attack yep. and eight range. Well, or whatever. I think you have the right thinking, right? The lower guys don't need to be beefed up that much. It's the only the crazy high point people where you're just like, you're not worth 188 points for what you do. Sorry. You know? So I think that's fine. Yeah. I don't think we have to worry too much about the little guys. If we give them sidestep and then they have, um, you know, a 15 off. Let's just look. Like, that makes uh, that, that Scarlet Witch from Avengers really good because now she has sidestep. And then she is minimum 25 points now. So she is, like, amazing on, like, the flip side. But that's, like, the one outlier, like, who I still think is great for 35 points in the modern time, which is the 057 Avengers Scarlet Witch. Now she uh, always has a 916, which she has top dial. But now she has sidestep with her flight, Avengers, Brotherhood of Mutants, mystical keyworded that are useful keywords, right? Now she's 25 points. So she's, like, really good. Like, really good 25-point figure, but still also, not busted. It makes, player. like, all the older theme teams, like Legion of Superheroes and uh, stuff like that, like Teen Titans, gives them a lot more, a lot better uh, support figures. So you've got, like, sidestep TK rather than just, like, TK that's stuck sitting where it is and has to, like, take an action to move and then take an action to key, yeah. TK. Um, so it does that. It also just like freeze up a lot of your actions if you're running if you're running like a ton of uh like cheaper figures it frees up a lot of your actions by just slowly shuffling your force forward i want to jump forward in time we did a bunch of no carded stuff now let's jump forward in time to uh, oreo dials with cards with normal cards right the old card format so now they get uh, 10 points off right five points off for being old five points off for having old card i believe with this guy's formula if i'm botching it a little bit sorry guys that makes and then with our new formula they get toughness at least if they're 100 points and they get willpower 
I'm going to compare this to the figure that I was kind of the most worried about in Golden Age. So now, uh, Zombie Super Scroll is 160 points. He has willpower, and he's got toughness his whole dial. Does that make him too good at 160 points? I honestly, he is good, right? He gets to choose four powers. He gets to damage himself. Now he doesn't have to worry about choosing willpower if he wants to, if he has to damage himself, right? Instead of pushing. And he always has a reducer. Does that make Zombie Super Scroll too good? my question hmm. what do you think and then when he doesn't have an attack power which is just his top dial click he has precision strike 160 is that is that too good do you think i I'm gonna say team bases aren't allowed right so he's not coming off a team base then when he is ts toughness now his whole dial is that yeah is that too I'm good gonna... for 160 i don't know i honestly don't think so because for 170 he was great back then. Yeah. Now we look at Franklin gets to choose four three powers. powers for any, points, three, sorry, yeah. three powers. Sorry, three powers, but any ones he wants, right? Or is it just it's got to be? A, no, a, it's just I can't any three powers. So yeah, you could pick. He is only precision. He's only sixty-five wave. points. Yeah. He got eleven clicks of life. Sure, he hurts himself, but so does Zombie Super Scroll. And we're gonna say Franklin gets no points off for sixty-five. So one hundred and sixty. Know, 95 points <laughs> uh that was wrong math 105 points more well, i guess at 170 is 105 points where he's 95 points more at 160 i think that's fair for what zombie super scroll does if we compare it to the latest thing that's kind of nuts you know even though zombie super scroll has printed powers sidestep barrier close combat expert not great really sidesteps good yeah charge poison Plex, and then he's got some close combat expert and steel energy mixed in there. His printed powers aren't amazing besides sidestep and perplex, really. And then on the off chance when he gets steel energy, I don't think for 10 points less using our formula, giving him toughness the whole time. Yeah, I don't think that breaks and, him. Uh, uh, I don't think he's I don't think it breaks him being a zombie. Yeah. You know? Especially since I think he's fine. He's already he was probably my biggest worry about like but most of the zombies have a bloated point cost anyways so i think he's fine and if we look at the zombie scroll doesn't get the toughness he's not over 100 points he will get i believe 10 points off sure so he's 55 points i don't think the zombie just generic scroll is busted either we're not giving him any powers we're not giving him any reducers 55 points instead of 65 is fine he has no movement attack sure he's got shape and super senses even with scrolls team ability I mean, oh, he's still now. he's still able to be like pulse waved and outwitted. Um, exactly, that's also true. Um, that's another thing. This super scroll can be outwitted, and Franklin yeah. can't. He's got power cosmic. So, yeah, I think that's fair. That's what I was most worried about because I'm a zombie centered person. Whenever you say Golden Age, I'm like, oh, I'll play the zombies. You know, it's how I am. So, the, my figure that I think is the most broken in Golden Age is like Zombie Super Scroll, which obviously isn't true anymore, but still. Just to I think, I think that's fine. Grab a right, figure. Let's do a five I, minute rant on zombie. Well, you, yeah, you grab a figure, please. To grab a figure I, that I, I think I could really use a fix, but doesn't really benefit anything from like our current formula, is the yeah. Superman set Black Adam at three hundred points. Mm. So at three hundred points, he can use impervious, but if he would be dealt four or more damage, he reduces that damage by three instead of two. Uh, his powers and abilities can't be countered except for his outwit. So he's got a protected outwit on certain clicks, on exactly two clicks. Um, he doesn't have any indom. So under With our, our thing, formula, we're giving him indom. We're yeah, giving him so indom, and we're dropping his points by, is it 10? I had 45 written if they're 300 points. But okay. I was also okay. kind of thinking no carded era. So let's say he has a card. So let's say it's 35 instead, Yeah, he does I guess. have a card. So that seems fair. So. so that drops him down to a point value where you'd be able to build with like a little bit of support in a 300-point match or a lot mm -hmm. more support in a 400-point match. I don't – yeah, I don't want to like implement like something where we think about giving like stop clicks or anything. Uh, even yeah. though I honestly think that this Black Adam in like a modern day setting would have one, um, 
there's just no good way of doing that across the board. But I think dropping his point value and giving him like quintessence would be fair. He's already got the protected outwit yeah. on two of his clicks. I don't think that's too much to ask for 250 plus in like a modern setting. I think most DC stuff that's 250 plus has some sort of power cosmic or it's just over costed for some weird reason. Um, that's the big one that I played recently that I thought needed to be overhauled. And so it really doesn't make him all that much better than he already is. He's already pretty decent, but it's not going to like break him by dropping his point value. And if you play him at one of the lower point values, it doesn't do anything for him. Uh, Oh, I also had written that if they're over 300, their minimum reducer was impervious. What do you think about that then with that in mind? Well, he's already got if we impervious say, for... But yeah, but like when he has toughness and stuff, you know, like... Well, he's... Yeah, he's, he's got... Already. There's uh, three clicks of invuln and two clicks of toughness. They're way down I dial, think though, if, yeah. he, if you're paying 300 points, having impervious all the way through would be fine, especially with those okay. values. Um I think uh, that's keep in mind, fine. Keep thirty-five points less, right? So he's two sixty-five. Yeah. Right now, but I mean, he's still he's vulnerable not. to like pensai and exploit. Um, he's still vulnerable yeah. to like the stuff that gets around protected outwit. And then if you play him at two hundred points, I'd say he still gets willpower, no quintessence, but like still gets willpower. And 200 is minus 25, and his minimum's in vol, so he's whatever 175 now, right? I think he's good at 200 or at 175 yeah. points at his 200 line, so yeah. And it, I think our formula it only pretty much like two clicks. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think that it works pretty well on him. I don't think that if it we works. say when it's an Oreo, an Oreo is basically instead of negative 25. 35 or 45 it's just 10 less type of deal i think that's fine for the oreo yeah we say that's oreo age you know i think that's good that's good so to get back to the the original post um yes i do really like his idea on like the base i like the rounding factor uh mostly for team building i like round numbers to build yeah. too i think that scaling it to point value makes more sense than making like a static point change. Uh, so like scaling it like we did scaling it when they're, you know, 300 plus or like 200 points or whatever. I think that makes way more sense than just doing an across the board, single stat or single point change, because you're going to have figures that are like 50 points and decent. And then you're going to have figures that are 300 points and unplayable with like more modern figures. So that would be my one, my one point of contention and then handing out some more powers than what like, uh, the, the really old figures have, uh, black Adam here has a fully stacked dial where yeah, there's not yeah. a single click where he's not doing something impressive, but, um, Back when Thanos was first popping around, he did not have a whole lot going on. He was a very bland dial. And uh, he's still a really cool figure. It's a cool sculpt, and he does have like some stuff going on with like his random really high attack power. But I think uh, giving him some sidestep and stuff. So, yeah. I think yeah. overall, yeah. He, has a, he has a good idea going. I think uh, like a little too. bit more like workout it. makes it even better. Right. So, based on just his idea, how do we want to rate this thread? We still didn't figure out a good rating system for Threaded Redemption. So, on a scale of uh, Earthbound Neutralized to Hypersonic Speed, where do you, like, where do you want to put this guy in? I'm going to say... Or I think those are fair. Or maybe we could do Leap Climb. I guess Earthbound is still technically thematic. <laughs> Let's do yeah. Leap Climb. Do Leap Climb to hypersonic speed. Where do you think this guy's idea for home rules fans? I'm going to say he's he's right in the charge range. He's he's leading the yeah, charge. Exactly what I was thinking. 
he's uh he, you know he's he's putting out an idea that's makes sense he's got some great ideas going i think fully flushing them out a little bit more uh, adding in some sort of like some caveats to like higher point figures because he's got some stuff for lower point figures it seems like that's mostly what he's playing with so that's fine mm-hmm. but um yeah i think if like anyone ever brings like a bigger dude to one of his home games uh it would make sense to figure the points out for that so yeah i think i think we'll give him a good old college try charge for this thread i am i'm in total agreement idea all right well that was Thread Redemption, ladies and gentlemen. I hope, ladies and gentlemen, goodness gracious. I hope you guys enjoyed Thread Redemption. We always have a good time doing it. We don't really do it enough. Um, so if you guys see any threads out there on HC Realms, this was an HC Realms thread. Uh, Clicks Nexus uh, on Facebook, even. If you see a Facebook thread anywhere. Reddit thread, if I have to. I don't want to go to Reddit. <laughs> Reddit. So, but you know, if it's, a, if it's a fun enough thread, I'll go to the armpit of the internet if you make me. So, but it's only if you guys send it to us. I'll probably just look for threads mostly on Facebook and HC Realms. But yeah, let us know uh, really quickly before we get into community. We have a few Patreon guys ranking up. So I'm going to do that really quickly. Ranking up to producer, we have Mike Temp- Templeton. We're going to make executive producer uh, 300 plus uh, because I realize like 100 to 200 is just that can be normal producer. Executive producer will be 300 plus. I know I'm changing things. I'm sorry, guys. Moving up in the superhero category, we got Jeff Polier, Tippy Toes Nuts, and Chance McCall. So congratulations on being superheroes. You guys can also choose to be supervillains if you want to. Send me a message. And then going to protagonist, we got John Carl. So thank you guys so much for supporting us on Patreon. This month's giveaway, and I'll make a Facebook, Twitter post uh, sometime after the show. We are going to be, first place is going to be getting a Black Adam Prime figure. And then second place, we'll be getting a Miles Morales from Earth X Prime figure. Third place... We'll get uh, a booby prize type deal. Uh, I'm going to give them either the uh, Silver Centurion Prime from the Mitzvah Iron Man set or the Captain Marvel Prime from Guardians of the Galaxy. This is going to be kind of a prime month. All right. So we're going to have three places. First place, Black Adam Prime. Second place, Miles Morales Prime. Third place, either that Captain Marvel Prime or the uh, Silver Centurion Prime. So if you want to be in on that giveaway, join Patreon and check us out there. If you want to support the show, by all means, thank you please do so let's go ahead and move on to community there are dozens of us dozens simeon let's go ahead and read let's say two each that are really good in this one just because we're getting a little long in the tooth here on the show so community tuesday's question what are you excited for in the upcoming hero click sets wwe 2 absolute carnage and house of x simeon what are you excited for in these sets for your own Mm. like opinion here uh, as far as sets go, I'm most excited for WW2. Um, House of X was a cool story. I don't see how, with the exception of like four characters, I don't see how House of X adds enough to like the X Men stuff that we already have that I need a whole set for it. I'll be interested to see what's in there. Um, Absolute Carnage, I'm interested mostly in the equipment, and I know that sounds, like, bad, because, but I, I really like the Necro Sword, I like the I symbiote heard. equipments and stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sorry. There will be a few figures in the Absolute Carnage set that I really want to get. Uh, I've already seen a few, but, uh, man, the WWE 2 set has a full list of figures that I probably am going to have to get. Uh, yeah. I can't, like, I've just looking at the sculpts, the Fiend, Bray Wyatt, um, the Demon Finn, Finn Balor, um, Kurt Angle, Macho, or not Macho Man, uh, Hulk Hogan, uh, Bret Hart, all the, like, the, all the really cool guys that uh, we didn't get in the round one, we're finally getting. Yeah including new day, whatever they, whatever garbage mechanic they give us that isn't tag team for new day. I'll still grab all of them because I like the sculpts and I like the, I think I'm not going to play like a 300 point. Hopefully they come out 300 points, a new day theme team, like a ton. Uh, I gotta, I gotta play it at least once. 
you know, oh, I'm yeah. excited. So yeah, keep, keep going. But that's, I mean, that's what I'm most excited about. I'm excited to see if they bring in any new, uh, like a lot of games do, uh, when they bring in like the second round of something, they bring in like a new mechanic. I'll be interested to see if they try and do that with uh, WWE two, if it's title characters or a tag mechanic or something like that. Title character, Kurt angle, the first eye, the second eye, the third eye intelligence, integrity, intensity. I would love that title character, (laughs) Kurt dude, or or like, and then like a finale, with a broken freaking neck, you know? Yeah. Or, or even like a plus one, you suck, can use perplex, but only to negatively modify combat. Like, I, now I, dang, I'm so mad that you said title character because now I'm thinking of title character Kurt. Obviously, Hulk Hogan would be the prime uh, person to choose for title character because, I mean, like, it's Hulk Hogan. Come on. That would be great. Uh, see, now I'm jazzed about the idea of title character WWE figures, but um, I don't think they would do that, sadly, just to keep WWE more simple. That's kind of like what they're, doing with wwe is keeping it relatively simplified yeah um, but yeah it's no, also I am like mostly... a static rarity so it'd be weird for one to be a yeah, title character true. without being but, like yeah. they'd have to do it like as like a convention exclusive or something a title john cena i'm okay with that or title sting <laughs> potentially oh we did get oh, the baby. yeah we did get the 3d rendering of it yeah do the sting picture i still like i assume he's an le or maybe he's wave three. If he's wave three, then he's like so far off in the future, it's going to kill me. But, anyways, I I've showed I've already talked about how excited I am for Absolute Carnage. Probably going to buy a case. Just really like I, I really do like Absolute Carnage. I've already talked about that. House of X. It's another X Men set where I buy like three figures, so I only need Nightcrawler so far. I can't wait to see what the other two figures I need to buy from the set are. Uh, potentially, it's just Nightcrawler. <laughs> so thank you, X Men sets for just. Yeah. <laughs> Man, if there's three Nightcrawlers, you know, like how there was like two in Uncanny X-Men, sure. There's a Warpath or a Thunderbird, then yeah, I got to get those guys too. But uh, that's pretty much it for House of X. That's all I need is just specific X-Men characters. And that's really it. And then, of course, WWE. I said how excited I am. I really would kill for a uh, Troublemaker or Trouble Alert uh, RKO out of nowhere. Randy Orton would be oh, amazing. Yeah. Or at least some form of like that where he comes, you know, just out of nowhere at the RKO. Uh, that's probably just going to be his signature where he can like move and then yeah. slam or something. I don't know. It'd also but, be cool if he could anyway. do it without needing like an action token. If he was like the first oh, character yeah. that could that just do it great. right off the bat. Like, he'll, he'll, he'll just sig people right off the bat, dude. He'll, he's that's exactly that would be nice. Yeah. You need a token to use a signature. That'd be great. Yeah, like I'm excited for a lot of I'm more excited for wave two because it has more wrestlers I care about than wave one did. I, I will definitely say that for sure. Um, the majority of Wave 2 I need. I think I only left out like two people. That is because Seth Rollins is human trash. And I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't know who Ricky Steamboat guy. Like as cool as he looks, I don't know who he is. I'm sorry. Ricky the Dragon um, Steamboat. Ricky the Dragons. I'm sorry. Um, but like, yeah, like only two figures I had to leave out. Everybody else, I'm like, got to grab them. You know, so I'm excited. I'm still waiting Simeon on Marshall. Jimmy's Superfly yeah. Snooker. Um, so on Facebook, first, on Facebook first, yeah. first on Facebook is Kari Thompson who says WWE the new day and then uh, absolute carnage a bit too soon to say but miles miles west is the chase on my list for sure house of X I'm really hoping for the team up cards are one per booster and better balanced per theme than in JLU no more situations like shiny knight and having the soul team up for his whole keyword. Mm. I'd agree. Um, luckily house of X is going to be based on a comic and not a TV show. So they realistically can't throw 120 at us. I'm sure they'll try because it worked last time. Everybody snapped those. Uh, Um, but yeah, uh. I, that's actually the one reason I'm really not looking forward to House of X. Uh, I honestly forgot. I can't wait for uh, for Professor X team up with Emma Frost and Professor X can use mind control. Oh boy, he couldn't do that before. Uh, no, but realistically, I just I really don't like the artificial re- like rarity that it creates and. Uh, how awful it is as like a collector to try and collect 
it's just like really disheartening if you wanted to collect a whole set to like realize there's one like part of the entire set that you're just never going to collect all of it without yeah. dumping a lot of cash at it. First one on Twitter that I want to read is uh, by Superfan Christian Bogan. Uh, I thought we already established that every set is a Spider-Man set in disguise. The newest Spidey set, House of X, should be interesting. Uh, <laughs> maybe eventually I'll finally get my bombastic ba- Spider-Man back. So that's great. Um, then he said, hashtag, when was the last time there wasn't a Spider-Man in the set? Hashtag never. Just like looking at it on all the Spider-Man family keyword figures, he is uh, not wrong. Fantastic Four, we have Spider-Man in there, baby. Uh, Captain America, the Avengers, Spider-Man. Avengers, Black Panther. Obviously, if it's an X-Men set, there's no Spider-Man. But every set that isn't an X-Men set, there has been a Spider-Man in. Yeah, uh, I guess DC Avengers, Avengers Infinity, there was a Spider-Mobile. But like, come on. Listen enough. Yeah. Regenesis. Yeah. S- Spider-Boy. Of course. Sp- well, I said anything but an X-Men set. Come on. <laughs> right. Next one on Facebook, Simeon. All right. Next on Facebook is Alex Morris, who says, I'm really excited for all the absolute carnage chases. That entire theme is sweet. I agree. Uh, Mm. kids getting some creative freedom is pretty cool. And I'm glad. Hopefully, upcoming, like, uh, WizKid champions will be able to, like, toss out potential stuff like that. That would be really cool. Uh, I I would dig that. He continues, as some others have said, if the team up cards in House of X are guaranteed one per booster, then I'm very excited to see how it folds out. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put any eggs in that basket. Yep. I'm not even gonna Just put a single it, egg. Leave in it that with basket. the exact amount of eggs in such basket. Don't take any in, take any out. Uh, Matt on Twitter says, "I'm most curious to see if they give any pieces in these two sets." The Fantastic Four keyword. I need more F4 already, bro. You just got a full set, man. Just chill out, chill out there, Matt. I'll agree. But, uh, I. T- I understand. Yeah, of course you would agree. You're just Mr. Fantastic (laughs) Four wipe swap. You're like, I have all these options. I've only played the team three times, but I want more options. It's super fun. All right, Simeon. I I I honestly can't wait to play that. I really can't wait to play that team. Oh, man. It does look fun. It's it's almost, it feels like it's almost half the set. Uh, It really does. Like, uh, so if you guys don't know what we're talking about, uh, all the versions of Sue Storm, Invisible Woman, uh, can form the new Fantastic Four, where you swap out an equal amount of points and characters for an equal amount of points and characters from your sideline. It can be less, it just can't be more. So if your sideline comes out to like a few points less, you can swap them in and out. Um, and it's really cool because this last set just gave us a ton of, of fantastic four keywords. So the more we yeah. get, we've also got the cosmic clash and the starter, uh, that you can swap in, but the more we get, the better it'll get. And that's just kind of cool. Um, so next, we're only, doing two, Simeon. we're only doing two Simeon. Facebook is Peter only Marshfield two, who says WWE two Randy oh, yeah. Orton. Yeah. Out of nowhere. Ah, uh, uh, got it. Jeez, you son of a gun. I, ugh, all right. I can't even be mad. I can't even be mad. It was funny. It was funny. All right. Uh, to finish off the show, we got a Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. Holding or hiding, let's make it clear. Some pieces are built for it like Explosion Abomination and others less so. On newer dials, you can use the grooves at the back or even build a wire stand to hold objects. So this is really cool. If you look at Colossus from Uncanny X-Men, his hands are close enough together so he can like hold a light or heavy that's like a paper object. Or if you have the grooves on the back, which all characters with Oreo dials have, you can go ahead and slot in the um, the object. I don't know if you do this or not. Sometimes I just put it on the card. I don't like putting objects on the card and then you kind of forget they exist. Uh, at any point in time, if I can, I like to use the grooves uh, on the dial, the Oreo dial anyways, to slot in the object. Sometimes you can mess up the corners, or right, there's no corners on a round thing, whatever. You can mess up the cardboard a little bit if you're not careful. But I like doing that. It shows that the character has an object. Uh, the tabletop teacher has this really cool like wire mesh thing that you can put on a character that will hold the object. If it is a plastic, you know how all the special objects, except for rings, I guess, 
have the uh, the thicker like plastic base. He has a stand for that. If you have like, there are certain characters that can also just hold those. Like the Uncanny X Men Colossus, he has his hands close enough together you can wedge it in there. Same thing, uh, like Jason Wingard, he has like one kind of up to his head where you can like slot in an object there. I like to do that, make Jason hold uh, whatever gem I want to give him or, you know, any object really. So yeah, put the objects on the characters. That's like a pretty fun little tip in case you guys don't know that using the grooves for the uh, for the little cardboard objects. Simeon, got anything to say or not? No, I like that too. I always try and jam them into the base and yeah, it does tear up like your cardboard objects, but... Uh... Yeah, if you've it's, got it's like a lot a, easier with newer objects for sure. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, if you've got a figure with like a weird effect going on, it really helps to uh, like hold the object down. Yeah. All right. Well, that is the end of our show. You guys can check us out on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, all these crazy places where podcasts are found. If you enjoy the show and you know other people in your area, I enjoy the show, go ahead and recommend the podcast to them. If they are podcast people and enjoy listening to fellow podcast people or people that are on a podcast, by all means, uh, tell them to check it out. We're a very casual show. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. That is facebook.com slash dial for hero clicks. That is where we're going to put up all of our community Tuesdays questions. We'll try to share the news as much as we can, like with new dials and new images that we see. Uh, thank you, police, for interrupting me or whatever this is. <laughs> Uh, is that a thanks. fire native in the uh, background? No, yeah, no, it's a uh, like ambulance or something. Anyways, I hope they up there are safe. Uh, anyway, uh, also on Facebook and Twitter, we put up our votes for Thursday Throwdown. Check out our YouTube channel if you guys want to see games. Uh, Simeon is going to be uploading some of his games when he plays tournaments and stuff, where it's going to be like Roll Twenty games, more of a competitive three hundred modern or some kind of somewhat slightly competitive game format, I suppose, because um, like he just can't lose apparently. <laughs> not really but all of our thursday throwdown games are in tabletop simulator so if you've been hearing tabletop simulator this and that whatever and if you're trying to figure out whether or not it's worth it for you to get it watch some of our latest like the last five or so episodes of our thro- thursday throwdown series uh, we've been doing on tabletop simulator we upload those every thursday sometime on thursday sometimes it's super early sometimes it's super late it just sort of depends uh, and me and Simeon build teams out of sets that are Golden Age sets. You guys will vote for what figures we use on our teams. We are now into the Oreo Dial Age, finally. And our next... Um, I'm going to keep talking, though. But seriously, check out Thursday Throwdown. Uh, you can vote for it on our Discord if you're on our Patreon. You'll automatically get Discord no matter what level you donate. And then on Facebook and Twitter... And of course, the comment section of our YouTube channel, you can check this out. We also do unboxings on our YouTube channel. So seriously, it would really help us out. I love YouTube and I want to do more YouTube stuff. We only have like 530 or so subscribers. I would love to get all the people that have the Facebook page liked, like all 950 of you guys to go subscribe to the YouTube channel and definitely check out some of the videos. I get it. They're like an hour, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. Our unboxings are no longer than 20-ish minutes. Uh, we just we have a lot of fun on our, on our YouTube channel. I want to start doing more skits and like short videos, putting those on our YouTube channel. So hopefully you guys want stuff like that. Let us know what content you want to see from us, whether it be stuff on the podcast or stuff on the YouTube channel by emailing us or messaging any of those pages. Like I said, Facebook, Twitter, email us at dialage for hero clicks at gmail.com. That's enough of the rant. I keep ranting and raving. Uh, vote for Thursday Throwdown. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And hey, just enjoy listening to the show, guys. Simeon, go ahead and read us out of here or any last words or thoughts that you may have oh i don't want to give my last words just yet i've got a lot of living okay, well, left to do all right whatever <laughs> but with that we will end the show and as always dial h for hero clicks is brought to you by coolstuffinc.com where you can find cool stuff in stock every day i found some cool stuff just the other day i was like oh man this is some cool hero clicks um it's always hero mm. clicks i always just buy hero mm. clicks uh but anyhow yeah check them out at coolstuffinc.com use code dial5 right. and save 5% happy trails <laughs>